Luke Thomas, Brian Campbell, right here in the Morning Combat Studios. Want to react to something that happened at yesterday's Media Day. All right, BC. So Tony Ferguson, who of course takes on Michael Chandler, UFC 274 main card this weekend on pay-per-view. He was a very, well, in some ways very similar Tony Ferguson, but in very ways very different. Boy, he did not have nice things to say about UFC President Dana White. He said that the, uh, essentially he was complaining about how he had been a company man and it wasn't rewarded. He was complaining about he was underpaid. Comparing them to drug dealers. He compared them to a drug dealer. He also has, has said that the whole concept of the Dana White privilege, which he had coined, was no longer funny because it showed favoritism in the company. BC, I have a few thoughts on this, but I'd love to get yours first. When you saw what Tony Ferguson had to say, what was your reaction? Sadness, to be fair, because it's becoming aware to these fighters. They're becoming aware, at, at, if in some cases too late in the game, that they didn't get what they deserved. In Tony Ferguson's case, boy, was he a company man, rushing himself back from injury, doing everything he could to try to secure that title shot that kept falling apart, and they took his interim title away when he was injured and all of that. But I'm looking at this rant from Tony that's happening the same week as Anderson Silva, who will be boxing soon in, in uh, on Floyd Mayweather's exhibition undercard, kind of being very openly critical about his exit from UFC and how he's handled. And the same week, by the way, that Dana White went on that the Pivot podcast and said, boxers are completely overpaid in reference to fighter pay. Uh, no one on that podcast stepping up and taking him to course. Luke, it's the deal where every time we bring up fighter pay, we come to this crossroads where we're media members, there's only so much we can do. But I feel like we're the only ones that were telling the truth all along, and now the fighters are trying to finally catch up. And the reason why I use sadness as my first knee-jerk thing is it's as if they're all realizing it now, but they're realizing it too late. Yeah, that was my read, too. It's, it broke my heart, actually. It legitimately broke my heart because, on the one hand, while he has clearly awoken to some of the unfairness of the fight game, you'd have to ask yourself, well, why is he aware of it? It seems like he's aware of it. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to UFC 274. He could win. But BC, even if he wins, are we really under the impression he's going to be like making a title comeback? And to that point, well, that's where all the big money is, based on the way that uh, obviously contracts are structured and fights are structured. Probably not. So it probably tells you that the reason he feels this way is one because he has good self-assessment. But more than that, it's because he realizes that the chances for the big paydays, they're probably all behind him. And he's not done, but he clearly knows that his time is very much limited. Again, 38 years old, sitting at 155, it now has dawned on him that he's got all of these injuries from all the fight game. Who knows what kind of brain trauma he's absorbed. Again, any fighter long enough in the game will have a lot of that. And now that the paydays that perhaps he had thought were going to be his, they probably, I don't know what will happen, but they probably won't happen, certainly not under the UFC at this point. And it's it's all a little too little too late, unfortunately. And it really, I, I have to be honest, like when I heard it, I was, I felt awful for him. Uh, not to say that everybody's misfortune, you always have to look in the mirror and say, what could you have done differently? I understand. But when you look at the situation with the rules in place, and this is where, you know, Ryan Clark got done wrong as he played for the, at the time, the Washington Redskins, and he got done wrong by management at the time. I'm just going to put this out. They got Adam Archuleta and they let him go and that was very unfair. But he still operated in the NFL with protections. He was an employee who had a union. He worked for the union for a while. And then not questioning Dana White when he says these boxers are overpaid is ludicrous beyond description. And here's Tony, 38 years old, gray in his beard. You know, not fully broken, obviously, in terms of all the injuries, but you know, he's got a lot of them under his belt and now aware that the fight game is so cruel at the end of it. It, it was Well, that's it was why trouble. it's sad. Not that, like, not that I don't disagree with Tony. I agree with everything Tony's saying and sure, just real, waking up to this. But here's what's sad is, you know, a year ago when we're bringing up this fight or pay thing because, let's give credit, when John Jones went public or Francis Ngannou first went public and tried to take a stand, you know, Dana's at every turn is saying, all oh, the fucking media, they're, they're trying to bring us down and all this stuff. And it was looked at more as media is pushing this narrative and the fighters aren't. But if you watch Dana White under any circumstance when he's asked about fighter pay, including on that Pivot podcast, when he basically laughed in their face and was like, oh, fuck these, you know, almost like, fuck these boxers. They're already getting too much money. You can't run a business spending this much money, which is why my fighters shouldn't make this much money. If you're a UFC fighter watching that, do you realize nothing is going to change unless you force the change? Every podcast, every media show can talk endlessly about what you deserve, but until... You, while still under UFC contract, step up and make this stand together. You saw what Dana, when Dana White said these boxers are overpaid and sort of laughed about it as this guy was making 27 million a year, whatever, huge stock option. I mean, he's done a great job. He's running a great company. But the boss ain't tanking those punches. They are. 
And what the boss is telling you is nothing will change if we keep this status quo. And he's almost laughing at them in the response. I'm not saying, Luke, tomorrow if they don't create a, a, a group-wide tease of a work stoppage, then nothing is going to change. But I actually might be saying that. Because if they don't collectively stand up for themselves now, what the hell is going to change? UFC is not even trying to do a middle ground of saying, hey, we'll give you 5% more pay. We'll, we'll put out press releases. We'll show you what we're doing. Maybe a Marshall Inu Joe Rogan uh, NFT yeah. can we'll give you help, a we'll give you, we'll give you some, some money from the NFTs while the NFT market collapses. Um, but, you know, we're not going to do it. They're not even doing that. Has certain fighters got, you know, Israel Adesanya reportedly just signed a, you know, breakthrough record-breaking deal. Some, some are getting richer, but across the board, there's going to be more of these end-of-the-road Tony Ferguson sad stories or more of these Anderson Silva no longer with the organization, now willing to tell the truth. But they're not going to mean anything unless active fighters do something. Listen, I've said this before. I'll say it again. Like, it, this is not like, oh, you should listen to the media all the time. That's not the argument we're making. But Because, listen, we, me and BC could lose our jobs and be out of the industry tomorrow. But the point is, is that when you have this job and you have it for a while, you watch all the cycles a fighter goes through because the cycles are quite short. And you see all the graduating classes and how it all kind of turns out afterwards. I'm going to say this point one more time. I said it years ago. I'm going to reiterate it. For all the fighters who might be listening or anybody else, the cavalry ain't coming. The cavalry ain't coming. No one is coming to save you. Bjorn is, Rebney's not coming through that door. Dude, Bjorn Rebney ain't punching the door down and saying, I've got some help for you. It ain't coming. So this is why when you look at Francis Ngannou, is he taking a risk fighting with the UFC in this way? Yes, of course he is. And could he go and fight Tyson Fury and get absolutely flatlined, in which he probably will if it's a regular boxing match? Yes, of course. But at the end of the day, you have such a small window. And not only do you have a small window, if you're fighting MMA, you have a small window with no federal law protections, you have no labor organizing, you have no association, you have nothing. You have nothing other than what you can secure for yourself. Francis Ngannou, if he can get a $100 million payday, even if it means he gets stretched for it, probably makes a lot of sense for his long-term efforts because he could get stretched in the UFC too, BC, and make an infinitesimal fraction of that. You must remember that the cavalry is not coming, and it feels good to be a company guy, but the, the company is a company. They're going to look out for their own interests, whether those align with yours or not. Look, Tony's probably not a saint behind the scenes, and in any negotiation, you got to be heavy-handed on both sides. I mean, okay? who, who, who knows but, if he is? But I just say that as a disclaimer to say we don't know all of the situations, but here's what we do know. This is now one of the company men a guy who did everything for the image of toughness and that he'll come back from any injury and he'll fight anybody at any time. Now you've got company men coming forward and saying, I wasn't handled correctly. It's not that outlier bitter guy. It's not this or that. It's now people who tried to play the game under the rules that they knew which could be their best way to get ahead and even they're you know, feeling that brunt. Um, it's just yelling into a microphone though until they do anything about it. So uh, how much longer? How much longer? I don't know, but you can because see, you can, you can see why guys like Tyron Woodley did what they did, where he was obviously well past any kind of fighting consideration when he was taking those Jake Paul fights. But when these guys begin to experience what it's like to have a different rule set in terms of the promotion and what kind of things yeah. they have say over and what the contracts look like and what the bank accounts look like afterwards, it begins to have a eureka moment. Silva, to your point, has really experienced this because he's actually been pretty good at it. But to that point, they realize, oh, wait, it could have been different the whole time. Silva just, made the same comment we're hearing wasn't. from a lot of ex-UFC fighters in the short term of when they're cashing in outside, whether that's BKFC or wherever. They're saying, I made more in you know, two or three boxing matches than I did six straight title fights to end the UFC. That can't, be, that can't be the norm anymore. And I don't know how much more we have to watch the UFC invest, UFC's Endeavor parent company make record amount of money, you know, TV rigs through the roof. Fighters not getting that increased percentage. So it's not as if there won't be some type of immediate result if they start getting paid. We've always talked about this. The matchmaking could change, the quality of cards could change. But I even heard Ariel Hawani, who had a good rant about it this week, uh, our, our brethren in the media, basically say it, it's hard. It's hard when you know how the sausage is made and you go deeper and you watch it. And I like the way Ariel phrased that. It's harder to do this job. It is harder. When you, when you, you develop, a, a, at times, not a friendship, but, a, but a, a healthy respect, a personal relationship at times with some of these guys, and you already know you're in largely a lose-lose game, which is combat sports. Very few, very few under any auspices come out better than they were before or come out gaining more than they gave 
And that's in boxing too, even with the high paydays. Inevitably, physically, you're going to pay a toll to make that money that's unnatural and unhealthy. But if you're also not making that money at times when you deserve it, at times when you're co-main eventing cards that you know are moving 800,000 pay-per-view buys, this is probably the last time we should film this video. Because, you know, I've been doing videos, what else like, I've been doing videos like this for years. What else could point. the media do? Uh, the Tony Ferguson rant, though, it's going to fall on deaf ears until more people with leverage and something to lose stand in front of that microphone and agree with That's me. why Francis is so different because, listen, if Tony loses, then everyone's going to be like, oh, this is, the, this is the malcontent who couldn't win a fight, and so we should just ignore him. When, in fact, let me say something to you. If you've had a career like Tony Ferguson and you've not been paid properly, <laughs> I mean, something has gone terribly, terribly wrong because that guy and his sacrifice on the altar of athletic glory, very, very few fighters ever will match something like that. So we'll see what happens at UFC 274 when he takes on Michael Chandler. God knows it's, a, it's, a, it's an ongoing story, and it's a tragic one, but it's one that is, for now, without end. BC, LT, MK.